When developing the character designs from the various Japanese toy lines into the Transformers, many details were altered to make them easier to draw or animate. Some Transformers were drawn without their tires visible in robot mode, and in Ironhide and Ratchet's case, were given heads. However, for many of the Transformers with robot faceplates, such as the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime, the cartoon had the characters emote by having their faceplate move up and down while they spoke. That is our next destination, Autobots. Transform and rumble! Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. As mentioned in my Ironhide and Ratchet video, the original concept of Takara's Diaclone line were vehicles that transformed into piloted mech suits. With their Micro Change toy line, the robot toys changed into everyday objects, such as a camera, a watch, a micro cassette recorder, and even handguns. Hasbro imported all of them into their unified toy line, the Transformers, in 1984. Subtle changes were made to some of these toys to have them fit into being sentient robots from another planet that fight each other in a simple good versus evil storyline. The first commercials advertised the Marvel comics using animation with robot designs by Japanese artist Shohei Kohara. However, further revisions were made to the robots to streamline them and make them easier to animate by the character design supervisor Floro Derry. Most of the Season 1 Autobots were drawn without their tires. Jazz notably is missing his door wings. Prowl and Blue Streak, though they share the exact same toy mold, have a variation in their head design with Blue Streak being the one with his shoulder-mounted cannons. Even Ironhide and Ratchet were given heads, which their toys, infamously, are missing. In addition, in a change from the toys, the decision was also made to make the Autobots have blue eyes while the Decepticons uniformly had red eyes. The details for that will have to be a discussion for another day. All of the Micro Change minicars, Bumblebee, Cliffjumper, Huffer, Brawn, Windcharger, and Gears, sported plain looking faces on their toys. However, their animation models were upgraded to give distinct faces with robot noses and mouths, which gave each of them a lot more personality than before. This was also true for Trailbreaker, as well as Trax and Perceptor in Season 2, and Sandstorm in Season 3. The time we fought for what we believe in, our freedom, our planet, our lives! The legal dispute with Harmony Gold caused the character of Jetfire to be completely redesigned as Skyfire, which included giving him a face in the cartoon. Two of the most popular characters in the franchise, both Soundwave and Optimus Prime, had mouth plates on their toys that were clearly kept in their animation models. While Soundwave was given a visor instead of plain robot eyes, and that his voice was given a robotic vocalization. Humble, activate bio drivers. Operation he and Optimus Prime both spoke with their faceplates moving up and down. This helped the animators give the feeling that these robots were indeed alive. Who can say, Spike, in this vast universe is anything truly forever? Many other Transformers were also animated in a similar fashion with moving faceplates. Back! I'm better than ever! Look at this new paint job! I've gone beyond being just plain old bumblebee! I'm a gold bug! In addition, because of poor faxes being passed around, some animation models had details that were quite different than the toys, which included giving moving faceplates to characters such as Dead End, Superion, Crosshairs, and Trigger Happy. <laughs> Due to the rush production, the Protectobot leader, Hotspot, was sometimes drawn with a mouth and sometimes with a faceplate. This of course isn't even counting the time he battled alongside Defensor in Carnage in C minor. Unique to the other Transformers with faceplates, Wheeljack's ears would flash as he spoke. <clears throat> I think you're gonna eat those words on a silicon wafer. 
Let's show them. In addition, the grill lines on Warpath's faceplate lit up as well. With the exceptions of the episodes A Decepticon Raider in King Arthur's Court and Season 3's Five Faces of Darkness. Shockwave's cold and logical demeanor was even more chilling with his single yellow eye, which also glowed as he spoke. The various ways to make each of the Transformers unique in their own way helped shape the attachment people had to these characters. Bumblebee, this is uh, somebody named... Carly! It's a pleasure to meet you, Bumblebee. The tradition was of course followed in the Japanese exclusive series, The Headmasters, as seen with Chrome Dome, Six Shot, and Sound Blaster. While he is not Optimus Prime in Japanese continuity, Jinrai kept the tradition of a moving faceplate in Super God Master Force. Strangely, the Decepticon Godmaster Buster who is known as Dreadwind outside of Japan, has a faceplate that opens side to side as he talks. This was as far as the Japanese series went with moving faceplates, as none of the characters with them in Victory, including Star Saber and God Jinrai, moved as they spoke. For many years, fans wondered if these Transformers had anything underneath their faceplates, considering that they had been seen consuming Energon in a similar fashion to Transformers who have mouths. Optimus Prime was, after all, once the young Autobot Orion Pax, before being completely rebuilt with a faceplate. In the Marvel comics, the Transformers, for the most part, used the same animation models as their cartoon counterparts. However, artist Jose Delbo, during his run on the comic, drew Soundwave with a terrifying looking mouth. This was probably because the faceplate on Soundwave's toy was most likely misinterpreted, but it's still cringeworthy. In fact, it was so bad that IDW digitally removed it when they reprinted the comics. Marvel also produced a few big looker storybooks with illustrations by Earl Norum. Some of his strange choices included Megatron emerging from a car to blast Cliffjumper, whose headlights were replaced with eyes. But the most cringeworthy illustration was this image of Optimus Prime. <laughs> However, towards the end of the comics, Power Master Optimus Prime destroyed Unicron using the power of the Matrix. Unfortunately, the explosion left him dying. With his faceplate destroyed, what was revealed underneath was a speaker, allowing him to speak as he instructed Prowl to give command of the Autobots to Grimlock before Prime succumbed to his wounds. In Beast Wars, the leader of the Maximals, Optimus Primal's toy, had a similar head to his ancestor, Optimus Prime. However, the animators chose to give him a mouth revealed in the middle of his faceplate. At the end of Season 1, Primal actually has his faceplate cover his mouth when he attempts to destroy the Vox Planet Buster. His upgraded forms chose to have mouths in robot mode. It's time to transform and roll out. And almost all the toys of the character moving forward had mouths as well, including his upcoming War for Cybertron trilogy's Kingdom toy. However, his masterpiece toy does come with an interchangeable faceplate. In the Dreamwave comics, the decision was made to give Transformers who had faces in the G1 cartoon but faceplates as toys the ability to have retractable battle masks. This included the Minibots, Bumblebee and Brawn, Jetfire, who was drawn similar to his G1 cartoon counterpart of Skyfire, had a removable helmet that was designed to look similar to his G1 toy. However, the popularity of Optimus Prime's moving faceplate was eventually carried over into the toys. One shall stand, one shall fall. The very first masterpiece toy of Optimus Prime had a feature that allowed his mouth to move up and down by pressing a button. In addition, Underneath his faceplate was the same speaker grill seen in the Marvel comics. The first Transformers Armada Optimus Prime toy also had a moving faceplate feature as well. Unfortunately, this did not carry over into the anime, which kept Prime and all other Transformers in the series without a mouth with static faceplates. This was also true in 2001's Robots in Disguise. 
Strangely, the first wave release of Transformers Energon Optimus Prime had a mouth molded onto his faceplate similar to Optimus Primal, which was eventually swapped out with his standard look. Fortunately, this did not make it into the anime, but that's not saying much. Another character in Energon, Wing Dagger, was killed when an Energon tower came crashing down on him. When the Autobots found him, his faceplate was damaged, revealing his face underneath. He was then revived as Wing Saber, who continued to have his face covered throughout the series. The final series in the Unicron trilogy, Transformers Cybertron, pushed this idea into a feature on Optimus Prime in a way that has persisted in the franchise since. Here, his face is once again designed to look like Optimus Primal, but when he transforms into Super Mode, his mouth plate would slide up. While it did not move up and down as he spoke, the animators were consistent in making sure it was there. By the early 2000s, a new genre of superhero movies reached the mainstream, but many of them took vast departures from the source material. The costumes of the X-Men barely resembled their comic book counterparts, and Spider-Man, in addition to his organic web shooters, constantly removed his mask during battles as even a subway car full of New Yorkers saw his face. When Michael Bay signed on to direct the first live-action Transformers film, he did not want any of the robots to look like pre-established characters, since he did not think too highly of the franchise. They're so boxy, I would love to do that for the fans. Just show a 35 foot tall, put it in a real environment, <laughs> in a movie, and just show how lame it would mm. look. However, Aaron Archer, the head designer of Transformers at Hasbro at the time, pushed to ensure that at least Optimus Prime was recognizable. If you think about where Transformers came from, the robot culture of Japan is in part based on the tradition of samurai armor. As such, his head design was changed, but his faceplate was now retractable, showing off a strange looking mouth. In addition, Bumblebee also had an insect looking battle mask that slid down during fights. During the final battle of the first film, Optimus Prime's faceplate did move as he spoke, but the sequel films chose to ignore that function, even going so far as destroying it completely or having Optimus retract it sometimes when he needed to speak. On the other hand, Soundwave was given monstrous looking insect teeth instead of his familiar faceplate. Soundwave rebooting. After the live-action films came out, the retractable faceplate became mainstream, which pushed many Transformers series afterward to follow suit. In Transformers Animated, Bumblebee, Prowl, Sorry Sumdak, and even Sentinel Prime had retractable battle masks. Although Optimus Prime had one as well, which did move up and down as he spoke, he used it sparingly. In the IDW comics, Sentinel Prime used a retractable faceplate during combat. When he first met his cassettes, Soundwave was seen without a faceplate until he was rebuilt to be able to carry them. Like his live-action film counterpart, Optimus Prime began using a retractable faceplate to drink. As it was revealed, his lucky faceplate was removable, which he frequently did throughout the comics, such as when he faced off against Galvatron and Unicron. Since the makers of the War and Fall of Cybertron video games were G1 fans, Soundwave and Optimus's faceplates moved up and down as they spoke. However, by the time of Transformers Prime, all of the characters were designed without noses, and Optimus Prime had a retractable faceplate similar to his live-action film design. Megatron... Be gone! In addition, Wheeljack was also given one as well instead of his familiar flashy ears. Trying to ruin my day. You're gonna have to try harder. After being revived and having his voice box finally repaired, he took my voice. He will never rob anyone of anything ever again. Bumblebee revealed that he kept his faceplate up the entire series. In the 2015 Robots in Disguise cartoon, Bumblebee, in addition to Sideswipe and Strongarm, inconsistently used battle masks throughout the series. Even Optimus frequently battled without it. In the Rescue Bots cartoon, most of the Autobots were drawn with similar looking faces, including Optimus Prime, who used his faceplate on occasion. However, its sequel series, Rescue Bots Academy, horrified fans of Optimus with this unsightly looking face. 
In Transformers Cyberverse, Optimus Prime spent most of the series without his faceplate, using it only on occasion during some battles. However, Soundwave had a static faceplate as his voice was represented with the wavelengths on his shoulders. However, since the Transformers franchise has been trying to unify its look with iconic characters, there have been some series that have kept the iconic faceplates on Soundwave and Optimus Prime, such as the Bumblebee movie, which saw Prime's faceplate move up and down like his G1 counterpart. Once we've gathered the others, we'll join you. You must protect the planet. However, Bumblebee, whose face still resembled the Bay films, also has a retractable battle mask. While the Prime Wars trilogy was ill-received, they at least remembered to have Optimus Prime's faceplate move when he spoke. Unfortunately, when Rodimus Prime chose to revert back into Hot Rod, he too had a retractable faceplate as well, despite it not fitting the character so well. Kid, this is gonna get a lot worse. How was that even possible? In the War for Cybertron trilogy cartoon on Netflix, the series did remember to have Wheeljack's ears glow as he spoke, but both Optimus and Soundwave's faceplates remain static in the Siege cartoon. While the recent trend for a retractable faceplate on many Transformers may work, sometimes it's better to leave well enough alone. Some may believe that the characters cannot emote without showing off their mouths, but time and time again this has been proven false. Amazing. A booby trap that actually catches boobies. Especially when great films like Deadpool show otherwise. Perhaps characters such as Optimus Prime and Soundwave can permanently have their faceplates once again, but it would be nice to see them moving up and down while they talked. I'm open to suggestions, and you don't need to raise your hands before you speak. Otherwise, it can lead to horrid things like this. <laughs> but what do you think? Do you prefer characters like Optimus Prime to continue having a retractable faceplate, or should he always keep his iconic look with it up all the time? And should characters with a faceplate be animated with it going up and down once again? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you like this video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I'd like to thank my patrons and my channel members for your continued support. I have many more Transformers videos like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. Just as it always was, like the rest of New York City. Autobots, transform and roll out!